Welcome once again, my fellow manipulators of digital fate. I'm Richie. This is Capricorn. Today's deck is called Legends Never Die. Heroes get remembered, but legends never die. Now this is mainly an Esper deck, but we are splashing red, and that's for a very key component, which we'll get to in just a minute. Before we get to that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment. All of that stuff helps our content get out to way more people. We're trying really hard to get to 1,000 subscribers. We're almost there. We're on the cusp of 700, and we've been getting a lot lately, so uh, help us get to 1,000 so we can be a, quote, real channel. And without further ado, let's... Wait a minute. There's another sponsorship? Oh yeah, we're sponsored by Cometeer. Do it! Cometeer Coffee. It's a uh, coffee, but it's easier than coffee. And if you know Capricorn, you know that he likes his brew. And I ain't just talking about decks, I'm also talking about coffee. Look at all these kinds of coffees. You simply take off the thing, put it in the thing, add some stuff. Easy coffee. It's to go. Now, yeah, put it in the coffee pot. It's, oh my gosh, she's so happy. Drink the coffee, order the coffee. It's super cheap coffee, super easy coffee, and it's better than the Starbucks. All joking aside, Cometeer Coffee is actually really rad. It's pretty cheap. You can save $40 across two boxes by using my link, and uh, you'll be helping to support the channel as well. So if you want some brew, make sure and dive in. And now, speaking of diving in, Let's dive into the deck. All right, so this deck's pretty wild, and I'm looking forward to expanding upon it when uh, Brothers War comes out, which is going to be really exciting. Uh, I think this deck is primed to get a nice upgrade with that set, but we're starting off here, and the core of the deck revolves around Radadravic, obviously. This is a 3-3 legendary zombie wizard with Vigilance and Ward 2. Gives other zombies you control Vigilance, and then whenever a legendary creature you control dies, you get a token that's a copy of it, Except the token is not legendary, and it's a 2-2, and it's a zombie in addition to its other colors and types. So the idea here is we want to go wide with legends, we want to sacrifice our legends so that they come back as non-legendary versions. But the real, the real key to this deck is the fact that we can combo out and do some absolutely insane things. So the reason we're splashing red in an otherwise Esper build is for Jaxus. Now, Jaxus is a 2-3 legendary human warrior for 1 red and 3. Uh, you can pay 1 red, tap him, or, or her. Is it a him? Is it a her? Tap them, discard a card, create a token that's a copy of another target creature you control. It gains haste, and when this creature dies, draw a card. And then you have to sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. You can only activate it as a sorcery. You can also blitz this in for 1 red and 1. And what's cool is you can activate the ability immediately if you blitz it in, because blitz gives it haste. And then, because of blitz, the jax itself gets sacrificed at end of turn. So, the core combo here is we get a Ratadravic into play, and then, as long as we have two red mana, we blitz a Jaxus into play, immediately tap it, discard a card to make a copy of the Ratadravic. The copy will be a token that will be legendary, which will then immediately die to the legend rule, and then trigger Radadrabic's ability, which will bring another token back as a non-legendary version of Radadrabic. So you'll have the legendary card and a non-legendary token of Radadrabic. And then at end of turn, the Jaxus will die to the Blitz ability. You'll draw a card, and because you have two Radadrabics in play now, you'll get two Jaxus tokens in play as zombies. If you can get this off, you can start to really go wide with Radadravix. Next turn, you can activate both Jaxus tokens, targeting Radadravic. Radadravic dies again, creates a copy for each Radadravic, so you go from two to four. And then when you activate the second Jaxus token, you make a copy of Radadravic, you let it die, it comes back as tokens. You go from four to eight. Now you have eight Radadravix. You can see how this can get out of hand. So we're supplementing this with a lot of really cool legends that have abilities that we can either stack up or abilities that let us get value when the thing dies or ETBs so that as we make token copies, uh, we're just getting as much value as possible. So at the top end here, we have four AO the Dawn Sky and two Junji. Now the idea here is if we make a bunch of AOs because we have a bunch of Radadravics out, 
we get to get a bunch a bunch of triggers, dig through our deck, get a whole bunch more Errata Drabix and God knows what else, and just go nuts. Or we can just put a bunch of counters on our team and go nuts that way. Um, and then Junji, the same thing. We make a bunch of a bunch of token copies of this. We can force them to basically discard their whole hand, or we can put a punch of non-dragon creatures from the graveyard back into play. But what's cool about Ao and Junji in particular is if we don't have the combo going yet, say we get out Ratadrabic, and before we can get the combo going, they kill our Ratadrabic. We can use Ao or Junji's death trigger to either search for another Ratadrabic or to bring our first Ratadrabic back from the graveyard with Junji's ability. So no matter what our opponent does, we just keep grabbing Ratadrabic. We're either grabbing it from our library or we're putting it back into play from the graveyard until eventually he lets it stick. And then we just go to town with our combo, which is pretty crazy. So the ability to combo off with these dragons once we have the Ratadrabic combo set up, um, combined with the fact that if we don't have the combo set up, they help set us up by digging deeper or getting stuff back from the yard, just makes them really, really powerful and really perfect choices for this deck. Um, we've also got three Rafine Scheming Seers, because, I mean, if you have seven Rafines and you attack with, like, ten creatures, they all have Vigilance. All, all of the zombie tokens have Vigilance because of Ratadrabic. They're all triggering Connive. They're all getting huge, and then you're drawing and discarding a bunch of cards, selecting exactly what you want to keep in your hand, and then they have Vigilance. So all those huge attackers are sticking around as blockers if they happen to survive. It just obviously gets gets obscene. Rafine's a crazy card, so it's pretty obvious that that's going to happen. We've also got three Geralt, Visionary Stitcher. Now this is a 1-4 Legendary Human Wizard. It gives zombies you control flying, and you can pay one blue, tap it, sack another non-token creature to create an XX blue zombie creature token, where X is the sacrifice creature's toughness. So the idea here is, not only is this going to give all of our tokens that come back with Ratadrabic flying, when they already have Vigilance, which is probably just an evasive way to get in and close out the game, while still holding up flying blockers, which is pretty crazy. Um, but also, it gives us another sack outlet. So if we have, you know, a bunch of legends on the on the field, and a bunch of copies of Ratadrabic, and we just need a way to kill one, so that we can get the combo to trigger, and get a bunch of copies, this gives us a way, just paying one blue mana, we can sacrifice whichever legend we need to, get all the triggers that we need, but we'll also make a big flying zombie that's got flying and it's got vigilance from Ratadrabic as well so just a ton of synergy there really really good inclusion in the deck we've also got two relic of legends uh, this can help ramp us out to what we need this is pay three mana for an artifact you can tap it to add one mana of any color you can also tap an untapped legendary creature you control to add one mana of any color this is a good way to to make sure we have extra sources of red for our um, our Jaxus to combo off but what's important to read here is it doesn't matter if the legendary creatures have summoning sickness. You can still tap them for mana. So you can tap a couple lands, play a legend, and then immediately tap that legend to, to make any color mana with Relic of Legends to play something else, and then immediately tap that to make more mana. So you're able to sort of vomit a lot more things onto the field quicker than you'd think while also fixing your colors, while also ramping you up to the combo quicker. So I think it's a great inclusion. It's hard to include four because it can be a dead card. I think two is the sweet spot here. And then in the two drop spots, we've got three Thalia, since most of the deck is just legendary creatures. Uh, very little in this deck actually gets hit by, um, by the ability of Thalia to make non-creature spells cost one more, but it keeps our opponent that much further away from being able to use use their removal and what's important here is if you have a Thalia on board and then you're able to drop Rada, Radadrabic on curve on four the two ward that the Radadrabic already has combined with the one extra mana that Thalia makes our opponent pay a lot of times just means they can't kill it before we get the combo off so Thalia is a really good inclusion here as a two drop we've also got two Jadars uh, because he makes zombie tokens every turn while also being a legend. Um, and those zombie tokens, again, they can have flying, they can get in for extra damage. Um, they're also useful to sacrifice, and we'll, we'll get to that later. Uh, 
We've got two Denix. Again, another good two-drop legendary creature. This one happens to be one we can bring back from the yard and generate more value, which is nice. And then we've also got two Ludovic. Now, what's cool about Ludovic is you can pay four and X, exile X creatures, transform it into one of those creatures and put a put counters on it equal to the number of creatures you exiled uh, from the yard, of course. Now, when you transform it, you become a copy of any creature in the yard that you exiled with Ludovic, but that copy is also a legendary zombie, Olog. So what's cool about Ludovic here is you don't have to actually sacrifice Ludovic in order to turn him into a zombie to get the zombie synergies. So you could just transform Ludovic into, I don't know, a Junji or an Ao or even a Radadrabic, except it's already a zombie. So it's already going to get those synergies, it's going to get Vigilance from Radadrabic, it's going to get Flying from uh, from Geralt, um, without without having to sacrifice it and bring it back as a token, which is really cool. And then after it's, it's flipped, obviously if it ever dies, you'll get whatever triggers, and it will come back again as a token version, which is very, very cool. So that's nine two-drop legendaries. We've got eight three-drops, six of which are legendaries, and two are the Relic of Legends. Uh, another card we have in the four drop slot that we have just one of is an Urtai Resurrected. Um, sometimes you just need that extra bit of removal, and being able to go wide with Urtais when you need to uh, is nice. Um, if you're desperate enough, you can take out a key permanent of theirs or counter a key spell. Maybe they're going to farewell you and exile your whole board. You can stop that. Very, very cool card. Um... What's worth noting is the last card here that I haven't gone over is Rite of Oblivion. Now, this is our supplemental uh, removal of choice, and there's a reason for this. This is pay two mana as an additional cost to, his, to the spell. You sacrifice a non-land permanent, and then you get to exile any non-land permanent, and you can flash this back. So this is already one of my favorite removal spells because you get to use it twice. Um, but what's, what's cool about Rite of Oblivion in this deck is a lot of times you're looking for ways to sacrifice your legends so that you can trigger Radadrabic, and you can tr trigger some of the death abilities like Ao and Junji, um, and just start to go off. And instead of having to rely on them dying in combat and having to set that up appropriately, you can just use Rite of Oblivion to sacrifice what you need while also getting rid of their worst permanent. So that's a really good card as well. Uh, and in a similar fashion, Urtai here, you can use to kill one of your own legends to trigger the Radadrabic and the other triggers when it dies to get copies while also drawing yourself a card which is another really cool piece of of interaction there um and synergy but what's what's cool about this too is with the right of oblivion we've got another way we can kind of use it and and that's why jadar is important and i i mentioned this earlier that we would talk about it later uh the tokens that he makes they're not the most useful they are more useful in this deck because they get flying from Geralt, but they're even more useful in that if you don't want to sacrifice a legendary yet, or if you don't have the combo going, you can use Rite of Oblivion and sacrifice one of the zombie tokens that has decayed since it's going to die anyway. Um, so a lot of really cool synergy built in this deck. It's very common to just go wide with like 8 Ratadrabics and then sack a Rafine and make 8 Rafines, and then just swing in with an obscene amount of an obscene amount of damage um and just get the win um but i think what's especially special about this deck is the fact that when you don't get the combo there's so many ways that this deck can still put in work and can still work towards getting to the combo even if they kill your ratadravic and, and i love those checks and balances i love that there's you know you're, you're not dead in the water if they stop your combo you know cold on curve like there's more you can do to still get there or to just plain win with things like Rafine. So, very cool deck. In the mana base, we've got three Xander's Lounge, four Rafine's Tower, two Sundown Pass, two Haunted Ridge. This is mainly because we, we need to make sure we have enough red to for the Jaxus activations. Uh, we've got two Shattered Sanctum, one Takanuma, because getting something back from the yard is pretty good in this, one Adawara. We can bounce something if we need to save it, or bounce something of theirs if we're worried about it. Iganjo to uh, kill out a key, kill a, kill a cre key creature if, uh, you know, if we're trying to just survive long enough to get to the combo. But the most important lands are four Secluded Courtyards and four Plaza of Heroes. The Plaza of Heroes is obvious. Every single creature in this deck is a legendary, so we can pretty much play anything. 
but also we can pay three tap exile this to give one of our legends indestructible and hexproof until end of turn which can be really important if we're just trying to make sure Ratadrabic survives just one more turn until we can go off with it. Um, and then the Secluded Courtyard is cool because most every creature in the deck is human, so most times we can just name human. There are some key instances where we don't want to name human, so you want to be careful about what you choose. Um, the other creature types we could name is Dragon for our top end, or Wizard to make sure we can play Ratadrabic uh, with mana from the Secluded Courtyard, while also still being able to play the most amount of other things, because uh, Urtai's a wizard, Geralt's a wizard, Jadar is a wizard, lots of wizards. Ludovic's a wizard. You'll, you'll see in the deck, wizards are uh, a thing. Uh, and then there's also Rafine, who is a Sphinx Demon, so every now and then we'll name Demon if we want to make sure we curve out on turn 3 with a Rafine, and we don't have any other options other than playing uh, a Courtyard as one of our first three lands. So that's the deck. you got to be a little bit careful about, about what you name with Secluded Courtyard. Um, but I love the checks and balances and the run redundancies. I love that we can just get to the combo so consistently, so effectively, and even if they disrupt it, have such a good chance of getting back to it. Deck's really powerful. I'm really stoked to brew a new version when Brothers War comes out, and I'm really proud of it. So, like I said, this is the deck. Let's check out the games. We'll keep this. Looks fine. We can lead with the pass. Pay play. Play Plaza on two, play Thalia, not make a decision about Courtyard yet, because if we absolutely need to play Rafine with the Courtyard, then we can name Demon. Hi, we're playing a game. He must be getting coffee. I'll let it slide. Right? Maybe. Not really concerned about grinding the ladder right now. I just want to get some good games that show what the deck is supposed to do and how it gets to its wins. So I don't even really care if I win every game or I get a free win or whatever. I just want a good game where I do my thing. I think that will forever be my favorite emote. Alright, Sundown Pass on one. Come on, Amoeba. Amoeba. Uh, Amoeba. Unfortunately, the Sundown Pass will not let me play Rafine. Maybe I should make... Maybe I should split those lands up. Instead of all being red-white, maybe I should have like a red-white, a red-blue, a red-black. So that if I do happen to get two, they're still usable to cast Rafine. I think that's a change I can probably make. Well, Courtyard, we're going to name Demon. So we can play Rafine. And then he can't block me. Discard. I guess right of oblivion. 
welcome to 3-2 first strike. If he swings next turn, his hopeful initiates will go up. But we will eat his hot shot mechanic. Which will be nice. There we go. We can hold up Urtai, swing with both of our creatures. We could flash Urtai and kill both of his creatures by killing one with the ability and blocking the other when they swing. Hi. Did you forget we were playing a game? Yeah, it might be. Come on, man. This is so lame. Like, you're out of mana. You're out of decisions. I'm giving him the good game. Because he's being an ass tard. Well, Bin. Urtai. Because the second Rat of Drabic's too good. The fifth land to play Junji is necessary. And to play Rite of Oblivion. So it comes down to Urtai and Junji. But if we're keeping the fifth land, we might as well keep Junji. Junji can always just bring back Urtai if we want. supposed to enlist. This is the most annoying opponent because you're making awful play mistakes and trolling me. This swing is a f swung as a four-two. 
because it enlisted this, then this would have gotten a counter him in a 3-4. The only thing I could have really effectively blocked would be the Guardian, and he could just discard a card to give it Instructable and then still kill my Ratadrabic, which means I didn't even really have any good blocks, which means I probably would have just taken 7 and gone a 9. But I'm playing against someone that either doesn't know what they're doing or is in a rush. Doesn't seem like they're in a rush, that's for damn sure. Considering all of the salt roping they're doing. Wizard. I'm going to take a nap. Right, make a copy of Radadrabic. Discard a Junji. Because Radadrabic's just too good. Keep that one. How are they even getting time to think when they have no way to respond? Oh, I guess because they can discard. So lame. Oh. We'll make Rafine a bigger target for him, because if Rafine dies, we're happy. We get two Rafines. We don't want him to kill Radadrabic. And we don't need to necessarily go win more by putting the counters on Ratatrobic so we can be greedy and sack our Rafine next turn to right and keep all of our counters. That's just kind of win more. We would much rather cover our butts in case he kills the Ratatrobic. We'll discard those. If he does kill the Rafine, it's nice to have a backup in hand. Denik, we can bring back. The Relic would be nice, but I don't think it's worth keeping over the Rafine. Alright, now we'll get two Jaxuses. And draw a card. Peacekeeper. Seize my hand and scoops. Oh, easy, easy, easy. How dare you? How dare you force me to divulge my secret identity? Unbelievable. Don't even care. Fucking magic. The magic the gathering. Nobody's gathering. I'm sitting here by myself in a fucking corner. <sighs> what is this shit? This isn't even a hand. This is not a hand of cards. Mulligan. 
This is acceptable. Unflattering, but acceptable. Keep it. Fucking play this game. Don't even know. Don't even know. Why would you do such a thing? Lead with his hand as ouch. I must. What else am I going to play? Don't need your points, Finn Gone. Get gone. Get gone, Finn Gone. Go play your Tem Tem. Your fucking hockey. No one cares. Play Jadar. Jadar understands. Jadar's a fucking wizard just like me. He knows. Bah! Welcome to the stream, Crunch! Don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's probably not a thing at all. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to use you. I'm going to say. I bid you good day. Back, beast! You will get no food from me. Fucking animals. These animals are such fucking animals. Duress? Ha 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 ha! Ha! I'll drink to that. <sighs> oh, what's the matter? Did you waste your little dress? <laughs> Word to the wise! Don't fuck with a wizard. Don't do it. No blocks. Who needs to block? Fuck is blocking anyway. Hmm? Lame human. Human. Play out rat rapic. Ha! No counter spell? What kind of wizard are you? A wizard streams precisely when he needs to. When he means to. Not a moment sooner or later. Do you understand? Get the fuck out of my chat. You have to earn your place in a wizard's chat. Do you understand? Do you even understand? Demolishing this man. I'm demolishing this man. It's because he's not a real wizard. Do you understand? Losers have to play Shieldred. Losers always complain about their best. But wizards go home and fuck the prom queen. <laughs> this at all. I guess we'll just have to win. I guess we'll just have to win. Make a copy. Discard Ludovic. Keep Ratatrapic. Jadar dies, we'll get two Jadars, and I'm quite okay with that. Hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm very excited about that. We get two Jaxes. Look at all our copies. That's what a real wizard does, do you understand, boy? <laughs> Keep it in your pants, I know you're excited. Keep it in your pants.
You can go fuck yourself. We have to sacrifice a creature. Well, considering I have a zombie. You think you can invoke despair? Pussy. What do I do to win? You must die. We have the right of oblivion. So many things I can do. I still play you. We only have one mana to play with if we write of oblivion, so here's what we'll do. Discard. Raffin. Keep the original. We'll get two more Ratadrakes. Then we'll target Chief Eldred. We'll sacrifice Ratadrakes. We'll make three more Ratadrakes. Exile shield. Yes. And we'll swing in with all of our vigilance. Cause why the fuck not? Although if he does have another invoke despair, we're in we're in deep shit. Or as my father always said, Tough Titty said the kitty. But clearly the milk's still good. <laughs> sure. That's not going to be good enough. You can't do it! It's a fucking wizard. You're no fucking wizard. I want to see a wizard. Look at the wizard. Look at all my wizards. I have one wizard, two wizard, three wizard, four wizard, five wizard, six wizard, seven wizard, eight wizard. Eight wizards. Eight wizards. You have no wizards. I have eight wizards. How do you... How do you even expect to beat me? If you're no wizards. Pathetic. Fucking pathetic. <laughs> A bank buster. I don't even keep my money in the bank. Don't trust those bastards. I am dragon. Pussy. Name some dragons. I'm gonna do some crazy shit. Are you ready? Are you ready? I don't think you're ready. Discard you. Keep you. Oh boy. Oh my lantern. Ah, hello. Hello, Virgo. Welcome to the stream. This man, the 77, thinks he's a wizard. He's no wizard. Look at my wizards. It's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. Have you ever seen a wizard go this, this wide in your life? Never. Never. Pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. And now, we swing. Do you have blockers? 
Do you have blockers, good sir? <laughs> no blockers. <laughs> Fucking bank buster, so good it's. A lot of good it's doing you! Nothing. Ha <laughs> ah, ha! My hat's off to you. Oh, thank God that game's over. I don't know how long I could have kept that up. So we can't play our Denik with this mana. We can't play our Ludovic with this mana. It kind of sucks because we've got the Radadrabic and the Jaxus in our hand with two early plays. But we're hanging on a, on a prayer. A hope and a prayer at this point. So we're going to have to toss it. As much as I hate it, we're going to have to keep this one. Toss back the Junji. Let's go, White Pimp. Lead with a tower. If we can just draw into a two or three drop on curve here and just play anything before turn four, I think we'll be okay. No luck. Human. Pass turn. I want to make sure and get two red sources out as quick as possible so we can do the Jaxus trick. Although, Radadravik's probably not sticking. So maybe we just play Jaxus? To eat some removal. Yeah, I feel like we just got to uh, feel out his removal first. If we go Jaxus this turn so we can block something. AO next turn. At that point, if he's got removal, he's got to use it, right? And then it's safe to play Radadravic. Although, now that I think about it, we could do it like this. a little bit greedy. But we get it on right now. Just means we have to survive. Gotta kill the token. It's not killing the token? So we go to one. We could go to one and keep both Radadrabics. Is that good enough? We would get multiple copies of AO next turn. <sighs> That's difficult. Let me think. AO fetches us something. Makes two more AOs. That's five permanents on the field. And he has six attackers. Which means that alone will not be good enough. <sighs> which means we have to block, which means we probably don't stand a chance. Damn it. Well, if we don't, if we can't make an extra three blockers, we definitely don't stand a chance, right? Whew. 
I mean, this isn't the deck I'm the most excited about, is he? So, I'm not, I'm not super worried about that happening. All right, if I play Geralt, and then I make a copy of Geralt with Jaxus, I would then have three Geralts. I could sacrifice the. Oh, I could sacrifice some of them to make flyers and be left with Thalia's. Oh, that might be a way to survive. Oh my god, this is so... This is just crazy. Is that better than Ao though? Ha! We've got it. Uh, we can't kill that, though. Gotta kill his Urtai. Right. Now we've got multiple blockers. We've got enough blockers except for his fucking underdog. Unless he gives something first strike. Damn it. All we need is something to have first strike and we could survive his underdog. That's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. I think it even matters what we do. Wait, that's everything blocked. That's everything blocked. So you don't gain any life. We get more copies. We put counters on all of our shit so it survives. And he scoops! <laughs> he scoops! A lot of expensive plays here. Turn 3 Garolf or Relic. I don't know if that's good enough. We are on the draw. Mm, we'll try and keep it. It's not so bad that having the extra opportunity to draw into a better curve uh, isn't worth taking. So that's the direction we're going to go. We'll lead with the tower. All we need to do is draw into a 2-drop or a, a better 3-drop. Actually all we really need is a 2-drop. If we play Relic on three. Yeah, we play Relic on three, and then we drop our fourth land and play a five drop, and that's not so bad. Although it looks like we're playing against Mono Blue. Which, by the time we cast that AO. Woof.
probably gonna get countered. We have to try, so... He's got full open mana. Let's do this way. That leaves us two mana up, so he can't do a typical pay two where it's countered. If he has an essence scatter, he's fine, or if he has two counter spells, he's fine. Let's see. Force him to have to use two. Oh. Gets into play. I mean, that's fine. Why didn't he just do that to begin with and keep the counter spell? Pretty weird. Impulse. Stop being so impulsive. There's a terror. It only has one mana up. We're fine. He might have bounce. Nope. Okay. But he is very out of gas, and we're still at 20, so I'm not super worried. The best he can do is fading hope our dude. Mayo again. We just have to keep trying to play whatever can stop that terror. Gonna make disappear and sack his guy. Well, that's exactly what we wanted. Last turn. And he scoops. Uh, this is a little slow. We have no two drop, but we have the two tap lands, so it kind of makes makes sense. I think we can keep it. Slam Rafine on three. We're just gonna need to make sure that we uh, have a follow up player. We're gonna be in rough shape. Sanders Lounge. We can go Haunted, Haunted Ridge Rafine. Black, blue, white. Probably have removal on his turn. But I don't think he'll be able to do it this turn. Not unless he had a cut down. Alright, so no cut down confirmed. Playing Restoration. Urtai Resurrected. Well, we'll play Plaza of Heroes in case he tries to kill Rafine. The swing. We'll dump the second Rite of Oblivion. That seems kind of perfect. Hit for two. Pass the turn. Hold up Urtai here. It's gonna discard. Is he gonna ramp? He is gonna ramp. Could have countered it with Urtai, but... Mm. I mean, we definitely want Urtai in play, so we can't afford to just not do anything. So we'll counter this, let him draw a card. Then we'll get to swing big here. Alright, we're gonna go... 
human. Swing two. Put the counters on Urtai, because he's going to try and kill Rafine for sure. What do we get rid of? Another Rite of Oblivion, probably. I mean, all the dragons are really good here. We can play Garolf and Denik, or we can play one of the dragons. I'm worried about Farewell next turn. need a way to recover from that. So, I think I'll ditch the things that are bad if he farewells. We'll hit for seven. Let's see. We could hold up Takanuma here. Which is going to cost two. Play Geralt. I think that's the the best. We don't want to not put more pressure on the board. But we also want to make sure we're covering our butts as much as possible if he farewells. So only putting one thing on the board and then holding up Takanuma to get something out of our yard. Uh, when he tries to exile our graveyard. So Seems like it probably makes sense. Okay. No farewell. Wandering Emperor. Okay. So he kills Rafine. But we get to keep our board. And now he's in a position where farewell might not be super worth it and he's tapped out on our turn which is pretty huge get back to Junji <sighs> let's see Play Denik. No, that's not gonna work either. I think we just swing everything at the Emperor. Make sure to kill it. And then we play out Ao. Farewell's gonna hurt us pretty hard right now though. Come on, Mega Wars. Yeah, it's not that good. It is what it is. Do we play Denik or do we play Junji? He knows about Junji. I think we get Junji out while we can before we hit some counter spells. He may have another farewell, but if he doesn't. I think we're in decent shape. If you can't exile the Junji, we can we can uh, really help balance out the board state against him. At least as far as card advantage is considered. All right, he does have exile removal. That is unfortunate. Plays his own Denik. Well, we're playing a Denik. Playing Jaxus. Because we can. Uh, what? Okay. He must be planning to farewell. Just wants to gain the life. That's all I can think. 
still not worth letting him come through and hit us for two on the off chance of it. Because if he doesn't have the farewell, this is the better play. If he does have the farewell, he gets to not hit the graveyard. So he just gets to kill something. I guess that's not the worst ever, right? But with this, then we'll play another Denik. We'll keep that one, let that one die, and then bring it back. Really depends what he's top decking. If he can get rid of both of our creatures with whatever's in his hand, then we're in a really, really rough position. Assume he makes a 2-2. Two -two. We'll do it like this. We do have Plaza of Heroes held up, which is nice. Hold on to this secluded courtyard to bluff interaction. Not super worried about the damage he's doing. We have time to stabilize. We have a life linker in play. He's not quite gonna want to farewell. Because he kinda loses more than we do, or at least the same amount that we do. We're getting clue tokens, which is wonderful. Let's hit that clue token. Sure. Not too bad. Now we're both investigating whenever a creature goes to the yard. I think we lead with the Thalia. Make his things cost more. He doesn't have any interaction. Which is what we just saw. Honestly, kind of fine with trading this Denic if we have to. We'll end the turn. Again, we'll keep this as a bluff that we have something to interact with. In subsequent turns. So we a 3 4. He's got to have another Wandering Emperor in hand, right? It's the only way he would do that. We'll just do that. If he does have a Wandering Emperor and AO dies, okay, he just wants to draw cards. But if AO dies, we get extra value off of it, so it's not as bad. The best of one challenge will be coming back, Ty. We're trying to figure out what makes sense for channel points and what might make sense to do other ways. Those. 
Kill that guy. Get him down to 12. Once again, we'll hold on to the courtyard. Let's actually crack this now, though. Let's play it. Hold up this one card to bluff. If he draws another farewell, we're in really rough shape. That's the only real problem. Plays to fairy. Sure. Sure. Probably finds a farewell. Which means we have to do as much as we can with our creatures on our turn. got enough to play it right now, right? He can pay the one extra from Athalia. He could tap out and do it if he finds it. So hopefully he didn't find it. Nope. Just a Denic. That seems fine. Pass two attackers. We're going to cycle this at instant speed. Could be a mistake. Because if he has removal, we, we lose the usage of Plaza of Heroes. Let's see if we can slam Radodrovic here. Sick. can't really attack. Well, Thalia could attack. Because we'd, we'd, tri we'd trigger Rotodrobic, right? So that's probably fine. If he kills Thalia with Denic, that means he loses his token to our Denic. Or loses his Teferi. So yeah, that seems fine. He'll go to 4 and back up to 6. It's gonna bounce Ao. Does he have the farewell? If not, I think we got him. Come on, baby. like he's out of gas for the most part. Two, three, four. Well, we're gonna do some freaking shenanigans. Unless he's got counterspell. Keep you. Get a clue. to combat. Just gonna swing all, see what he does. He's gotta have spot removal. But having the two Radodrabics in play is kinda wild. If 
put you at seven, but you take ten. What else you got? Put you at seven, and you take eight. Wandering Emperor, sure. Take five. Good lord. You better have a farewell ready to go. You better have a farewell ready to go. He is gonna be in trouble. Plays out the bank buster. He's digging for it. He's halfway through his deck. He's only seen one. He's got a playset. He should find another one. What's up, Izzy? Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the stream. Remember your train. Three, four. First strike, white flank. Don't really care if it ends up killing my AO. We'll get the trigger. But if he plans on farewelling, it could make sense. If he doesn't want to get rid of our graveyard, he'll get to keep this in the graveyard. After casting farewell. So it's better that it dies, rather than gets exiled by the farewell. That could be why he attacked. Nope, he's got no farewell. Come a tea of coffee. It's a uh, coffee, but it's easier than coffee. And if you know Capricorn, you know that he likes his brew. And I ain't just talking about decks, I'm also talking about coffee. Look at all these kinds of coffees. You simply take off the thing, put it in the thing, add some stuff. Easy coffee. It's the goat. Now, yeah, put it in the coffee pot. It's, oh my gosh, you're so happy. Drink the coffee, order the coffee, it's super cheap coffee, super easy coffee, and it's better than the Starbucks. Thanks so much for checking out my channel. Uh, we are pushing hard for that 1,000 subscriber mark, so please consider subscribing. Hit that button, there's a circle in the middle over there. Hit that, subscribe, tell all your friends to do it. Thank you. Also, give this video a like so more people can see it. If you'd like more PlayStation and console game coverage, we've got that down below. And if you'd like more Magic the Gathering coverage, there's more of that somewhere off over that way. Do all the things.